Good morning. It's Nancy today. You'll never guess. Well, you might guess. Anyway, today is 14 days abstinent from um, sugar, ch chocolate, flour, and milk products. And I went for a walk. Like, I have no pain in my bones and everything, but I just went for a short walk, and now my lower back hurts. So that's that part is not... Um, Arthritis related, I guess. That's structure. Something like that. Anyway, um, I'm going to tell you about how I'm doing this. Um, it's a 12 step program of Overeaters Anonymous. I'm using a book called He Did Deliver Me from Bondage. And I've certainly been in bondage to sugar. <clears throat> totally. Anyway, so. Um, Step one is honesty. You know, realizing that I am actually addicted to sugar. Step two is, um, well, the call is turkeys in that, yeah. Uh, sorry, step two, um, is it truth? No, humility. Oh, I don't know what it is. Anyway, leaning on my savior. Leaning on, leaning on him. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. And I just can't say it enough, but if an alcoholic can actually kick alcohol, and if a drug addict can actually kick drugs with this 12-step program, then surely I can kick sugar. If you go to lds.org, <clears throat> there's a 12-step this 12-step program is one of the things. That's our church. Anyway, so today, I had a wonderful thing happen. I put on a shirt, which I would never wear because it's kind of a thicker shirt and it always would stick to my midriff. And I don't like clothes that stick to me. Uh, I do want to wear it because it would always stick to my midriff. But I tried it on, and my goodness, there was a few inches between my stomach and the cloth, the shirt. Unbelievable. I could wear it, and it wouldn't bother my, wouldn't, wouldn't get caught up on my skirt as I turn or anything like that. Isn't that amazing? So, the first thing I did is, in this whole program, is to first believe that if they can do it, I can. If they can do it with the help of the Lord and with this program, then why not me? That was step. Oh, quite a lot of ice there. It's really cold out today. It's negative eight Celsius, and it's April the third. Anyway, uh, um. I remember that when I went to OA meetings, which, you know, I would like take a big chunk of bread with me as I walked over there. You know, it's like, uh-oh, I'm going to have to give this up. I better take it down so I get a handful of cookies or whatever. And in the people's testimonies, when they would stand up and talk, they would say that they had been abstinent the abstinence was not so much from overeating as from certain items that make you want to overeat. Certain items that are comfort foods that you turn to in crisis. And a crisis can happen at any time throughout the day. All day long you can have different crises. They don't have to be huge crises that anybody else would care about, but just yourself. So. <clears> H-A-L-T <throat> Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired Those are triggers For overeating Or for, for eating comfort food So I gave up I knew that they, those people had given up sugar And flour And those were the ones that were having all this success I mean they were just Thin people They were regular sized people Who came to the program which was un, 
believable to me that these people had actually been big. You know, the thing nowadays is to give up, is to, um, oh, the lake is, oh, look at this. I'm sorry, I'm here at the lake. Um, gonna watch the, look for ducks. Anyway, the thing about, wow, the colors are gorgeous. I was amazed that these people that were skinny had once been big. And that they actually had to make sure that they didn't turn to food. That they were still working the program. The people would, there was another thing people would say, which was, the program works if you work it. These are strange little sayings. And they say, except uh, God grant me, this is a serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Like the fact that my son has schizophrenia. Change, courage to change the things I can, which is me, my behavior, my outlook, and the wisdom to know the difference. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. They'd also say, the program works if you work it. And there are 12 steps, which are really quite religious. It's about faith, honesty. See, it's when we're dishonest, I think. I'm learning more about honesty now. When have I been dishonest today? You know, like dishonest with myself. Dishonest with myself is, and dishonest with God, not really accepting responsibility. Or in my case, I always figured, well... I'm not going to gain weight. I'm already as huge as I can be. But I was wrong. And so I have been gaining weight. I was up to 235 pounds. And now I'm down to 221 or something. So after I stopped with these foods, the pain went away. But I had... Um, I guess I was detoxing somewhat because I felt like I had the flu a lot. I felt I just I didn't have the flu because I didn't ache all over. I didn't have a fever. I didn't have a cold because I well I wasn't blowing my nose constantly and sneezing. <sighs> and so I think it was just detoxing which was making me feel so unwell. So I've been going around for two weeks thinking I'm sick. But I might not be sick at all. That is the most gorgeous view. Yes, yes, I'll show you. Anyway, and so today, so first of all, I had no pain. That was the big change. No pain. Amazing. Now, I've still been eating oranges and apples and blueberries and salads and vegetables. You know what I like to do? I like to nuke um, a frozen, you know, you get these frozen bags of, of broccoli. I like to just nuke them for 10 minutes or something, and then they're nice and soft. Did you realize broccoli is sweet? Now last night I had peanuts with salt on them and my knees started to hurt a bit. So I think that salt also gives me pain. So it's going to be salt and sugar. And I just have to get rid of these foods and then I can be pain free and I can have my body back. Yes! Oh man, to go to be using a walker and sometimes I'd have to use those uh, wheelchair carts in the grocery store where you can, a power cart. Because I just couldn't walk all the way across Walmart. I have a handicap sticker, for goodness sakes. See? I mean, that's how bad it is. I have to park close to the building and quickly get a cart. 
I would put part close to the carts in the parking lot. And then I could hold on to one. <coughs> now, I've had body odor for a while now, too. Like, I get out of the shower, and I still have... I still have smelly armpits. How's that possible? And I, you know, I scrub off. I get clean. So I think it's just this detoxing is what's happening. Anyway, but the biggest thing is that I could wear these clothes and they were loose on me. Unbelievable. After two weeks. Now I think that the reason that in two weeks I've lost um, 21, I was 35, so 14 pounds. I think the reason that I've dropped so much so quickly is because I was just, my gut was so full. So I'm emptying out my gut. Unbelievable. Anyway, I recommend it if you can do it. It's, you know, like the world today, we turn toward, med toward, toward, um, toward surgery. But even after you get your stomach stapled or cut in half and half your intestines removed, it's not going to help you deal with your problems. It's not going to help you think about why you do this. And to be able to depend on the Lord, to be able to um, to have Him in your court and know that He'll help you. He loves you. As unlovable as you may think you are, He loves you. He loves you more than you can possibly imagine, which I can't imagine. Look at, see the smile? <laughs> okay, that's my, that's my day, day 14 of abstinence. See ya. You can do this at home. Results may differ. <laughs>